the feeling of an inequality or a technology leaving people behind. Is there the danger that AI furthers those trends? Yes, for sure. I think that's something to think about. But one of the things that surprised us very pleasantly on the upside, because when you start building a technology, you start doing research, you, you kind of say, we'll follow where the science leads us. And when you put a product, you'll say, this is going to co-evolve with society and we'll follow where users lead us. It's not, you get to steer it, but only somewhat. There's some, which is just like, this is what the technology can do. This is how people want to use it. And this is what it's capable of. And this has been much more of a tool than I think we expected. It is not yet, and again, in the future, it'll get better, but it's not yet replacing jobs in the way that, or to the degree that people thought it was going to. It is this incredible tool for productivity. And you can see people magnifying what they can do by a factor of two or five, or in some way that doesn't even talk to it. Makes sense to talk about a number because they just couldn't do the things at all before. And that is, I think, quite exciting. This new vision of the future that we didn't really see when we started. We didn't know how it was going to go and very thankful the technology did go in this direction. But where this is a tool that magnifies what humans do, lets people do their jobs better, lets the AI do parts of jobs. And of course, jobs will change. And of course, some jobs will totally go away. But the human drives are so strong in the sort of way that society works is so strong that I think, and I can't believe I'm saying this because it would have sounded like an ungrammatical sentence to me at some point. But I think AGI will get developed in the reasonably close-ish future. And it'll change the world much less than we all think. It'll change jobs much less than we all think. And again, that sounds, I may be wrong again now, but that wouldn't have even compiled for me as a sentence at some point, given my conception then of how EGI was going to go. As you've watched the technology develop, have you both changed your views on how significant the job dislocation and disruption will be as AGI comes into focus? So this is actually an area that we, you know, we have a policy and research team that studies this, and they've seen pretty significant impact in terms of changing the way people do jobs rather than job dislocation. And I think that's actually going to accelerate and that it's going to change more people's jobs. But as Sam said, so far, it hasn't been the significant replacement of jobs. You hear a coder say, okay, I'm like two times more productive, three times more productive, whatever than they used to be. And I like can never code again without this tool. You mostly hear that from the younger ones, but it turns out, and I think this will be true for a lot of industries, the world just needs a lot more code than we have people to write right now. And it's not like we run out of demand. It's that people can just do more. Expectations go up, but ability goes up too. Thousands of AI researchers were asked, at which point machine intelligence will be able to do all human tasks. That's from this paper, Thousands of AI Authors on the Future of AI. The aggregate forecasts give at least a 50% chance of AI systems achieving several milestones by 2028. That's about four years from now including autonomously constructing a payment processing site from scratch, creating a song indistinguishable from a new song by a popular musician, and autonomously downloading and fine-tuning a large language model. And we will also look at another paper called Centaurs and Cyborgs on the Jagged Frontier, which as far as naming papers go, I gotta say this one has to be up there. We'll see how big of an improvement AI makes for common white-collar tasks, what the jagged frontier of AI capabilities is, and we'll find out if you are a centaur or a cyborg. So Sam Altman has been ahead of the curve in this AI thing. He was talking about AGI a number of years back and people kind of dismissed him. People kind of said, well, that sounds a little bit crazy. What are you talking about, AGI? But now less than a decade later, he's at the Davos forum with all the lords and ladies of the universe asking him how humanity should handle the coming of AGI. That's quite a big turnaround. And he casually drops the fact that AGI will be rolling out soon, version 1.0. And also it won't be as big of a deal as we imagined, at least when it comes to how work is done, how, how the economy is. But let's take a look at those two papers and see why he might be right. Why, once again, he might be ahead of the curve and what is he seeing that makes him say that? By the way, the lady on stage with Sam Altman, I was a little bit confused because I wasn't sure who she was. Her name is Anna Makanju, and she's currently the VP of Global Affairs at OpenAI. She, as far as I understand, was the one to fly around the world with Sam Altman and kind of help him be a liaison to these various world governments to try to educate them on AI and, and hopefully work out some sort of a policy for how we introduce AI to the world. Previously, she worked for Facebook as the Global Policy Manager, Content Regulation. Before that, as Facebook's Public Policy Manager, and global elections, which I got to say is quite the background because if you're not aware, there's a lot of fascinating stories about Facebook and how it intersects with a lot of the places in the world where, where they just can't moderate content as well as they can do in other countries for one reason or another. And there are some wild stories that take place kind of in that intersection of Facebook and, and how it was used. Now, I'm not making a point of agreeing or disagreeing with Facebook 
or their policies. I'm just saying that's got to be a hard job. And this seems like a really good person to help coordinate the rollout of whatever OpenAI and other AI companies are bringing into this world. I was a little bit confused because I kept hearing a Russian accent. So I just had to look it up. And apparently Anna was born in St. Petersburg, Russia, to a Nigerian father and a Ukrainian mother. When Anna was 11 years old, her family moved to Germany, then Phoenix, then Kuwait, where they lived until the beginning of the Persian Gulf War, and finally to Texas. But back to the paper. So thousands of AI authors on the future of AI. So in this survey, the largest of its kind, they say they surveyed 2,778 researchers who had published in top-tier artificial intelligence venues, and they asked them for their predictions. So again, the aggregate forecast give at least a 50% chance, so 50-50 chance that AI systems will achieve several big milestones by 2024, so less than four years from now, including autonomously constructing a payment processing site from scratch. So I'd be curious to know exactly what they mean. Do they mean like, a, like an e-commerce site? Like a checkout page, I assume. They'll probably have more details in the article. Creating a song indistinguishable from a new song by a popular musician, which I... That's one thing that I haven't really been paying attention to, but I believe they had a whole album by Drake that was supposed to be really good, according to the people that are familiar with it, and autonomously downloading and fine-tuning a large language model to kind of almost like cloning itself for specific tasks, perhaps. The chance of unaided machines, so autonomous AI agents, outperforming humans in every possible task was estimated 10% by 2027 and 50% by 2047. So that's a 10% chance in three years and a 50% chance in 23 years. And the latter estimate is 13 years earlier than we reached a similar survey conducted just one year earlier. And then the chance that all human occupations could be fully automated was forecast to reach 10% by 2037 and 50% as late as 2116. And most responded had substantial uncertainty about the long-term value of AI progress while 63 thought that good outcomes from superhuman AI are more likely than bad, of these net optimists almost half gave at least a 5% chance of extremely bad outcomes, such as human extinction. And 59% of net pessimists gave 5% or more to extremely good outcomes. Between 37% and 51% of respondents gave at least a 10% chance to advanced AI leading to outcomes as bad as human extinction. And some of the other concerns were spreading of false information, authoritarian population control, and worsening inequality. And there was disagreement about whether faster or slower AI progress would be better for the future of humanity. So there's a lot to unpack there. So let's get started. First of all, I got to point out and give them some credit for talking about authoritarian control, right? They specifically looks like talk about population control, but in general, you know, for I think for myself and a lot of other people, like the idea of an authoritarian regime backed by a superhuman AI is one of the scariest things that you can possibly imagine. This 5% chance of extremely bad outcomes such as human extinction, that is often referred to as P-doom. In other words, the probability of doom. So what, what do you think your probability is that just everybody ceases to exist or some other similar catastrophic event, right? So here they're saying a lot of people said at least 5%, but as some others have mentioned, there's also the probability of, of 1984, as they jokingly put it. So in other words, what is the probability of complete authoritarian control? So I'm glad that this is being mentioned here because we've heard a lot about, you know, extinction. We've heard a lot about false information and inequality. But this is something that, in my opinion, at least, doesn't get talked about quite enough. So introduction. Artificial intelligence appears poised to reshape society. And decision makers on every level are working to address how we do that. So we need to understand how the progress and impact of AI, how that's going to go. But there's a lack of consensus among AI experts. And here they list of various different researchers that are working on trying to measure or think about the potential events, the potential impact of AI. One important source of evidence comes from the predictions of AI researchers. This makes sense, right? The people that are actually doing the research, the work, what do they think? Maybe uh, let's ask them, where do they think this is going? And the survey took place in the fall of 2023 after a lot of stuff has happened. The launch of ChatGPT, GPT-4, Google's Bard, Bing AI Chat, Anthropics Cloud 1 and 2, and many other letters and regulations that were passed. The survey, they do have the full set of questions available here, so we might take a look at that later. 
how the questions were structured, and some of the questions were randomized to keep the survey brief. So before we start, there's two acronyms that so before we start, there's two acronyms that they're going to be using that you need to kind of memorize. So F A O L, full automation of labor. In other words, no human work is required anymore. Everything can be automated. And we have HLMI, high level machine intelligence. This is achieved when unaided machines can accomplish every task better and more cheaply than human workers. So here's the first chart that they show in the study. So really fast, let me zoom in here. And so just so you understand what the graph is showing. So sort of the, as you can see here, there's a line and then some sort of a marker in between. So it's a dark circle for tasks. It's an open circle if it's a job. But basically the beginning of the line, that's a 25% chance of that milestone being met. The, the end of that line is a 75% chance of that milestone being met. And the circle or whatever other marker they use there, that's a 50% chance. So 25, 50, 75% chance. So full automation of all human labor. They're saying 50, 50 chance that by, I don't know, maybe 2110, they're saying by 2110, there's a 50, 50 chance that we'll have full automation of, of all human jobs, of all human labor. Now, the job that these AI researchers think will be the longest to stick around, the one that's going to be least subject to automation, according to these AI researchers, is the job of being an AI researcher which is funny, but I mean, probably true. Next on the list is Surgeon, Millennium Prize. Then this is where the HLMI, Human Level Machine Intelligence. So that this line right here is probably 2043 or thereabouts. Publishable math theorems, machine learning papers, install wiring in a house, replicate machine learning paper, truck drivers, and equations governing virtual world. And this next chart shows, let's start from the bottom here. So simple Python code, good high school history essays playing Angry Birds, World Series of Poker. That's interesting because when AI would be chess champions, chess grandmasters, some people said, well, that's the end of chess. And in fact, the grandmaster who famously declared that chess is dead after being beaten by an AI was Gary Kasparov. This statement came after his defeat by IBM's chess playing computer, Deep Blue, in 1997. Chess now, I believe, is probably the most popular it has ever been. We have fake new song by a specific artist. I feel like they kind of kind of did that already. I don't know. I didn't look into that. I didn't read too much into that. Top StarCraft play via video of screen. So Google DeepMind, that research team, they already beat the top StarCraft players, but that was done in a very controlled environment. I think they only played one race or faction, however they refer to that, on one map. Like there were some constraints that they had to play with to beat that person. And the AI wasn't playing by watching a screen. Like it wasn't like it was using a keyboard and a mouse and just watching the screen, you know, with vision and then like playing according to that. So this is still not have been accomplished, but that's not because its abilities are not there yet. That's more because like the, the infrastructure, like the vision and stuff like that isn't there yet. We have it playing a random new computer game as well as a human this is interesting. Beat humans at Go after same number of games. So AlphaGo did beat the world champion at Go, but, you know, it was trained on playing millions, billions, some insanely large number of games. I don't remember the exact statistic, but this is an interesting approach. Can it beat humans at Go after playing the same number of games as the human? So if I've never played Go before and I go and play 100 games of Go and this AI only play the 100 games of Go, can it beat me at that level? So can it learn that as fast as I do or even better? Which is an interesting question because right now all our AIs deal with, you know, having it be given huge amounts of data. Will it be able to have the same abilities with a smaller set of data to be able to generalize as good as humans do? So all but four of the 39 tasks that were asked about were predicted to have at least a 50% chance of being feasible within the next 10 years. This includes economically very valuable tasks, such as coding an entire payment processing site from scratch. The six tasks expected to take longer than 10 years were, after spending time in a virtual world, output the differential equations governing that world in symbolic form. Which is interesting to think about. You put it in a simulation of a virtual world, and later it's able to tell you all the laws and the physics laws and all the other sort of laws that govern that world. And they were expected to take 12 years to get it to a 50-50 chance of it being able to do that. Physically install the electrical wiring in a new home 
and research and write or replicate a high quality machine learning paper, prove mathematical theorems that are publishable in top mathematics journals today, and solving long standing unsolved problems in mathematics. And they're saying that would take 27 years to reach a 50 50 chance of AIs being able to do that. But as you can see here, in a lot of these cases, and maybe in all of them, the change from 2022 to 2023, a lot of people are reducing how long they're expecting this to take. We think that full automation of labor will take, we're expecting it to take much less. High level machine intelligence, we're expecting it to arrive much sooner. New York Times best selling fiction, that's a huge leap. Most of these things seem to be like we're thinking that it's going to take less. The closest one, as I can tell, is construct a video from New Angle. And here's the probability of high level machine intelligence by a certain year. So here the blue line is the total forecast, kind of the aggregate forecast from 2022 and now for 2023. So it's much steeper. We're expecting stuff to happen sooner. Same with full automation of all human labor. One of the questions was, will there be an intelligence explosion? Some people have argued the following. If AI systems do nearly all research and development, improvements in AI will accelerate the pace of technological progress including further progress in AI. Over a short period, less than five years, this feedback loop could cause technological progress to become more than an order of magnitude faster. How likely do you find this argument to be broadly correct? So I think the main point here being less than five years, do you expect this to happen over a short time period, less than five years? Here are those results. They're kind of all over the place. People were very confident that that was going to happen in within five years of 2016. Confidence dropped quite a bit since then. And here's one question dealing with AI safety. Will AI in 2028, four years from now, will it be able to truthfully and intelligently explain its decisions? More than a quarter of people said it's very unlikely that it's going to be able to do that. I mean, this would pretty much be solving AI alignment. If it explains its decision truthfully and intelligently, that I think would put most people at ease about the probability of doom from AI. And then 35% say, well, it's unlikely. 20% said even odds, it's 50-50. 15% of the people said it's likely. And only 5% of the people said that it's very likely. And here they expand a little bit on what they mean. So they're saying by, will it be able to give the true reasons for doing it? And by true reasons, we mean the AI correctly explains its internal decision-making process in a way that humans can understand. And so they don't mean that true reasons does not mean the decision itself is correct. So just that it's able to explain why it did that. And in terms of various concerns that people have, you know, the number one is AI makes it easy to spread false information like deepfakes, manipulate large scale public opinion trends, authoritarian rulers use AI to control their population, worsening inequality, dangerous groups make powerful tools, bias in AI systems makes unjust situations worse, a powerful AI system has its goals not set right, causing a catastrophe, people interact with other humans less because they are spending more time interacting with AI systems, near full automation of labor leaves most people economically powerless. All systems with the wrong goals become very powerful and reduce the role of humans in decision making. And near full automation of labor makes people struggle to find meaning in their lives. And here we have the chart with the really big consequences of AI. So for example, what probability of human extinction? So this P doom as uh, it's referred to, blue is 2022 mean and median, and the red ones are 2023 mean and median. I like the fact that they split it into mean and median I mean, the mean is the average. So if you have a few people that are saying, oh, there's a 100% chance we're all going to die, right? That really drags this number out here. I would argue median might be a better representation of how most people feel. And then question two, what probability do you put on human inability to control future advanced AI systems causing human extinction or, you know, P doom, basically severe disempowerment, for example. So this is higher 10%. And what probability do you put on future AI advances causing human extinction? within the next 100 years, 5%. One interesting thing to see here would be how have scientists in the past in those fields, what probability they would put on other advancements, potentially dangerous advancements, you know, either causing human extinction or some other massive catastrophic event. How would the development of the atom bomb, what percent chance would P doom would they assign to that, for example? In the next one, so 70% of respondents say that AI safety research should be prioritized more than it currently is. About 22% in 2023, they say, you know, about the same. And about 8% say less or much less than it currently is. So that was us asking researchers when they think 
a lot of the tasks and jobs that humans do when it will be better done by machines, when machines and AI and robots, when they can take over and do them better. But very recently, there seems to have been a bit of a shift in terms of how a lot of these researchers are talking about AI not necessarily replacing us or becoming its own independent agent, but rather augmenting us and improving our abilities to get work done. And so this is from the blog of Ethan Mollick. We've talked about him a few times, I think, on this channel. The blog is called One Useful Thing. He's also on X slash Twitter. And he, along with other scientists, did a paper, and they called it Centaurs and Cyborgs on the Jagged Frontier, which is a phenomenal name again. And he's saying a lot of people have been asking if AI is really a big deal for the future of work. We have a new paper that strongly suggests the answer is yes. So here's a chart that's showing the distribution of task quality across all the tasks that they were tested on. And we'll talk about specifically what they were tested on. But this blue group did not use AI. The green group used AI and the red group used AI, but also was trained on how to use AI. It got some training to get them started. And as you can see, this is a big, big shift. The groups that used AI are significantly better. Some of the best outcomes of the group that did not use AI is some of the worst for groups that did use AI. Using AI was a massive, massive advantage. So the tasks were, there were 18 different tasks selected to be realistic samples of the kinds of work done at an elite consulting company. Now, of course, that might be a small set of all the tasks and all the work that can be done, but it's still nevertheless interesting. It's office work. It's white collar work. Consultants using AI finished 12.2 more tasks on average completed tasks 25% more quickly, and produced 40% higher quality results than those without. Those were some pretty big impacts. And the other very interesting thing that they introduced, this concept I think I mentioned before, it's this idea of the jagged frontier. And what the jagged frontier basically means is that there was this XKCD comic I mentioned earlier. So, you know, let's assume this is the boss. He comes in, he's like, when a user takes a photo, the app should check whether they're in a national park right? And the developer goes, sure, easy GIS lookup, give me a few hours. Or basically they look at the geolocation coordinates and they're like, okay, are they inside a national park or not? Very simple, you know, give me a few hours to complete that. And then the boss goes and check whether the photo is that of a bird, right? And so the developer's like, okay, I'll need a, like a whole research team and, and many, many years to complete this. And they're saying in computer science, it can be hard to explain the difference between the easy and the virtually impossible. And that's kind of the idea of that jagged frontier is there might be two tasks that for us, they seem like they're of equal difficulty. We kind of categorize some tasks that are very high difficulty, some as low difficulty. And sometimes when dealing with ChatGPT or GPT-4, it does certain things incredibly well. Out of the gate, it's better than humans. And then it just completely fails at these other tasks that we see as simple. And so here they describe it as its abilities to us seem as this kind of jagged frontier. It's extremely good at certain things. It's really bad at other things. And it's kind of hard for us to tell which one's which. Because for us, it seems like, you know, if it's able to do this thing, that's a certain difficulty level. It should be able to do this other thing that's at the same difficulty level. But it might excel at one and completely fail at the other. Now, remember our consultants that were forced to use AI. Some of them were forced to use AI to do various tasks. Here's the really interesting thing that kind of stood out to me about that research they separated the workers by high performance versus low performance. So their ability to do certain tasks. Like if you took everybody at the company based on how well they could, let's say code, and you tested them, you had a certain score for each of them. You can separate them to like the top 50% versus the bottom 50%. And what they found is that AI improved for the top half skilled participants. It improved their abilities by 17%, a good, noticeable, big leap, right? But for the bottom half of the skilled participants, it improved their abilities 43%. So the impact on people that may be not quite as good, not quite as skillful, AI's assistance has a much bigger and pronounced effect on their abilities than it does on the people that are in that top half. And finally, and I got to congratulate the researchers on doing this very well, is they found some tasks that are outside of the jagged frontier for AI, meaning the task that we might think might be easy, but we're pretty sure the AI might completely fail at it. So there's certain things that it's just out of the gate, not going to be very good at. So they specifically asked these consultants to do tasks that they thought the AI had a very high chance of failing at, where it would produce, as they say here, we identified a task that used the blind spots of AI to ensure it would give a wrong but convincing answer to a problems 
that humans would be able to solve. So the humans normally, without AI, without being told about AI, you know, they their the control condition, their chance of being correct was 84.5. Then they were asked to use generative AI on those tasks that the AI we knew it would give wrong but convincing answers. And then their correctness dropped to 60%. So this is what people often point to as the potential downfall of AI is like when it hallucinates or when it's wrong, when it leads people astray, people rely on it. And, you know, the person's abilities drops because they used generative AI. The next group, we used an overuse session where they went over what problems the AI might be bad at. So they sort of kind of gave them a little primer on how this could fail. And of course, the situation improved. So now they're at 70%, not quite as high as the control condition, but better than people that were led astray without knowing that that could be what was happening. In a different paper, they showed that relying too much on AI can backfire. In an experiment, they found that recruiters who used high quality AI became lazy, careless, and less skilled in their own judgment. They let AI take over instead of using it as a tool. He called this falling asleep at the wheel. And this is where we get to centaurs and cyborgs. What they found is most people using AI, they kind of fell into one of two categories in general. One was becoming a centaur or becoming a cyborg. So with the centaur, so a centaur is half man, half horse, right? So it's kind of half one creature, half another. I guess a mermaid could be a different way of calling that. So centaur work has a clear line between person and machine, like the clear line between the human torso and horse body of the mythical centaur. So centaurs, meaning the people that use this approach to use AI, they have a strategic division of labor, switching between AI and human tasks, allocating responsibilities based on the strengths and capabilities of each entity. So for example, you can decide on statistical, on what statistical techniques to do and then let the AI handle producing the graphs. Generally, centaurs would do the work they were strongest at themselves and hand off tasks inside the jagged frontier to the AI. And cyborgs, on the other hand, they kind of blend a machine and person integrating the two very deeply. They don't delegate the task to AI, they intertwine their efforts with AI, moving back and forth over the jagged frontier, such as initiating a sentence for the AI to complete. So I think of it as sort of talking back and forth with the chatbot, refining its outputs, and having kind of this like back and forth conversation. That's it for me today. What did you think? Do you think AI is here to take all of our jobs? Or do you think it's going to be less noticeable than some of us think? There's going to be more of an empowerment of people to do more with AI. It's just another tool that's going to allow us to do more and more and more without causing the widespread unemployment that some of us fear. Let me know in the comments. My name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.